Bob's a smooth talker, but that's not enough. Somebody should tip him off that no one can get by with B.O. Why not play safe this easy, pleasant way? Take a Life Boy bath every day. It's so refreshing. And remember, your daily Life Boy bath stops B.O. It's story time, ladies, and here's Aunt Jenny to tell you another of her real-life stories brought to you by Spry. As I said, brought to you by Spry, the purer, creamier, all-vegetable shortening. Oh, all right, I'll answer it. I just made that last sentence in time. Why, it's Fred Cooper. Hey. Fred, why didn't you walk right in? I'm carrying such a load that I couldn't manage the door. Oh, well, and thanks, Fred. Sit down a spell and rest yourself. That's just what I'm aiming to do. <laughs> thanks, Jenny. Well, I'll give you a piece of this apple crumb pie that I baked this morning. Well, I won't refuse because I figure you ought to make what? it. What's the matter, Fred? Well, just look at this mail sack. Here, heft it, will you? I guess most every woman in these United States must be writing to let you know how much she likes your cookbook, Jenny, and those frosting tips. <laughs> oh, cheer up, Fred. There's only one more day for the offer. Now, that's right, ladies. Tomorrow is the last day that we're making this big double-barreled offer. A copy of Aunt Jenny's own 52-page cookbook, crammed jammed with the most tempting, easy-to-make recipes you ever tasted in your life. For all occasions... Everyday economy dishes, company dishes, why, everything you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's only half the offer, ladies. There's a set of six different colored frosting tints comes with it. Rose, blue, green, yellow, red, and orange. Say, you know, my wife and I made a birthday cake yesterday for the little fellow that lives next door to us. Mm -hmm. And she put white frosting on it. And then wrote, Happy Birthday in pink on the top. <laughs> oh, fine. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, folks, you can use these tints for candies, too, and jellied salad. So hurry, ladies, and send for those two gift offers today. Now, just send in one Spry disc from the top of any can of Spry, plus ten cents in coin, to Aunt Jenny, Box 19, New York City. And did you get that? It's one Spry disc and ten cents to Aunt Jenny, Box 19, New York City. But do it today, ladies, or you may forget, and then it'll be too late. And now, Aunt Jenny, how about that story? Ready right away, Danny. Now, you remember, folks, how I told you about Molly Allen, who loved Bill Crawford, and how Bill went on an experimental flight to South America and never returned? Parts of his plane were picked up at sea, but he wasn't ever found. Now, during the course of a whole year, there was no news. In the meantime, Chris Johnson, who'd always loved Molly, finally persuaded her to accept him. He knew she didn't love him, but he hoped that she would sometime. Well, about three months after they'd been married, Dr. Tim rang the doorbell and... Dr. Tim, glad you dropped in to see us. Well, I had to see how the bride and groom were getting along. Yes, <laughs> Tim, this chair's more comfortable. Thanks, Molly. You know, I uh, thought I might be able to scare up a game of chess with you people if you're not doing anything. Oh, gosh, that would be fine, but... Well, as a matter of fact, I've been trying to get Molly to go out tonight. It's been weeks since she's been anywhere, and tonight we thought uh, of... Oh, well, in that case, I'd bite my lip, i bow gracefully, and make my exit. Some other night. Oh, no, why don't you come along with us? Dr. Tim, don't give up. You and Chris will be able to play chess. Here, I'll set the chessmen out for you. But Molly, do... Chris, I... I don't feel at all like going out. Oh, but Molly, I don't want to spoil Chris's party. I wouldn't have gone even if you hadn't come. Don't you feel well, Molly? As well as I ever do. Molly, what you need is a chance. No, no, don't try to be a doctor, Tim. You and Chris just play chess, and if you don't mind, I'll go upstairs. There, they're all set out for you now. But look, Molly, if you feel tired, why don't you lie down here on the Davenport, and then later Tim and I will make some coffee. No, Chris, I, I'd rather go upstairs. You'll excuse me, won't you, Tim? Well, of course, Molly. And I, I'm, I'm sorry that I don't feel like going out. Oh, that's all right, Molly. We'll run up and see you later. Well, Tim, that's, that's the way it's been for months. Not much fun for either of you, is it? Oh, I don't mind about myself. But you're worried about Molly. Mm -hmm. Tim, the marriage just hasn't worked out. We've both tried, but... No, it's no dice. Hmm. Upstairs now, she'll take out Bill Crawford's picture and those crazy postcards he used to send her, and she'll just lie there staring at them. It's over a year since Bill Crawford was lost, but for Molly, he's as much alive as he was the day his plane took off for South America. 
You married Molly, taking a chance that she'd learn to love you. Yeah, I went into it with my eyes open, Tim, but I guess I slipped up on one thing. I underestimated a ghost. A ghost? Mm Mm-hmm. The ghost of Bill Crawford. He's been with us right along. It was there the day we married, there on the honeymoon, there when we came back here and took this house. We've never really been married, not from the start. <laughs> a little while ago, you said a woman could be a bride for 50 years if she wanted to be. Molly's never been a real bride. Well, sometimes ghosts fade away. Oh, uh, not this one, Tim. He's getting stronger all the time. For Molly, he's more real now than I am. She's trying to hide it because she doesn't want to hurt me. But she's slipping back, Tim, back to the way she was just after the crash. And I can't do anything but watch and pray for a miracle. Chris, the other day you said you had an offer from a bank in South America to go into their legal department. Was it a good offer? Hmm. It's the kind of a break that comes once in a lifetime. Have you done anything about it yet? Well, I didn't want to tell Molly till I was sure the offer was definite. Well, I'm not sure my advice has worked out so far, but... Do you want another piece of it? What, Tim? If they do offer you this job, and it's as good as you say, take it and clear out of here as fast as you can. Oh, I mean to, but... Well, I'm not sure how Molly will take it. Well, that's just why you have to take this South American offer, to get Molly out of here. A new country, a new start. Ghosts can travel, but they're like ball clubs. Not so good away from their home parks. I'd say take this job, Chris, and maybe you'll have a child later on. You know, it's a little thing, Tim. But Molly has never even called me darling. That's not a little thing, Chris. Uh, Let's let's get the chess game started, huh, Tim? Okay. Uh, I'll take the black. It's my move, then, huh? Yes, Chris, it's your move. And for your sake and Molly's, make it a big one. Yes, Chris. Last week, I, I think it I think it was the day before Dr. Tim was over here playing chess, I, I had a job offered to me in the legal department of a bank. More money and uh, a wide-open future. Oh, I'm glad for you. You've worked so hard. You deserve something like this. When does the job start? Well, as soon as we get there. Get there? It's not here in town? No, it, it's in South America, Molly. South America. It's the branch of a New York banking house. You see, this country's doing more trading with South America all the time. South America? Well, that would mean leaving everything. The clients you've built are Dr. Tim, all your friends. Well, Dr. Tim said I'd be crazy if I didn't take it, Molly. It means the difference between just getting along all my life and really being a success. Chris, if it's as good a chance as that, you ought to go. But I can't go with you. Molly, I couldn't go without you. You know that. Chris, I don't want to leave this town. Ever. But why not? You haven't been happy here. There's a part of me here. And I'd feel as if I were deserting if I went away from it. I wish I could go with you, Chris. You deserve this chance. I want you so much to be happy. You're the one I want to see happy, Molly. That's why I want you to come. I wish you could leave this haunted town tomorrow, but if you can't... Why did you say that, Chris? This haunted town. Well, let's not fool ourselves, Molly. This town is haunted for you, and you know it. That's why you want to stay. Chris, I can tell you this from the bottom of my heart. For your sake, because you've been so kind and so decent, I wish it weren't haunted for me. But it is. And I guess that's all there is to it. I'm your wife, and I'll always be as long as you want me. But I can't help how I feel. Molly, look, let's forget about this now. I'll, I'll turn the job down. No, 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 don't do well, that. Well, I'll just put it on the shelf and forget about it. If they want to get someone else, they can. Other chances come along, and meanwhile, you and I can try to do better right where we are. Chris, you've tried for months to get me to take a weekend up in the mountains. I'll go this week if you'd like. Will you, Molly? We'll start Friday. You can take your fishing tackle. Oh, that's... And I-, I promise I'll try to cook anything you can. <laughs> the doorbell is pretty late for anybody to be calling. Alan. No, no, I'll go. Oh, Dr. Tim. Chris, 
Is Molly here? Well, sure. Come on in. Dr. Tim, what is it? You're as pale as a ghost. A ghost? You're nearer right than you think, Molly. Oh. <laughs> Tim, what is it? Uh, I just had a cable from South America. South America? They found Bill Crawford. <gasps> He's alive. Oh. Uh, Tim, she's fainted, right? She'll be all right. Get me some water. Water. Uh, oh, yeah. Water. Molly. Molly, it's Dr. Tim. Molly. Dr. Tim. Oh, Tim, I, I thought you came in here and said... I did say it, Molly, and it's true. Bill Crawford's alive? From what I can make out, he's still in pretty bad shape, but he's alive, Molly. And they've started him on the ship back for New York. Tim, this is what I've always believed. Tim, water. She'll be all right now. It was a shock of the news. Tim, it's wonderful if it's true. Bill's really alive. He's alive, Chris, and coming back. The fisherman who picked him up didn't have a radio or any contact with Will outside, and Bill's skull must have been fractured when the plane hit. That's why we didn't hear. Oh, Tim. They took him back to their village, probably thinking he was a sailor. And with the injury, Bill was half out of his head for nearly a year, not able to tell them anything. But he is alive, Tim. Yes. Alive, Molly. Molly, what's the matter? Molly, what is it? I just remembered. Bill and I were to have been married when he came back. But now we... But now you're married to Chris. <laughs> Well, now, Jenny, you know, it was hard to see how they get out of that mess. Yeah, it was terrible. Poor Molly didn't know what to do. She didn't want to hurt Chris, but she still loved Bill devotedly. Yeah, I guess she did. Plum crazy about him. I felt sorry for all three of them. I guess we all did, Fred. And my, oh, me, the amount of talk that went flying around Littleton. Molly should do this. And Molly should do that. And Molly always loved Bill. And Molly should remember she married Chris for better or worse. And I guess poor Molly was thinking all those thoughts, too. Because of what she decided. Uh, never mind what she decided, Aunt Jenny. That's the climax, the point of the whole story, and that's got to be saved for tomorrow. <laughs> well, this apple crumb pie can't be saved for tomorrow, and after the dent I made in it, <laughs> Danny here was only a split second behind me when it come to taking another piece. Well, <laughs> it's a grand pie, Aunt Jenny. I don't believe I've ever tasted one just like it before. No, no, me either. You know, I thought I knowed most every kind of apple pie there is, but this one's new to me. It's a humdinger. Say... What's that good taste and stuff on top of it, Jenny? Oh, oh, oh listen, Fred. It's a one-crust pie, ladies, with a brown sugar and nut topping. And a lot of you will find the receipt in a new spry ad that's going to be in your papers either tomorrow, night, or tonight. Well, I'm, I'm going to tell my wife to be looking for that. <laughs> you know, I'm mighty fond of things made with apples, and the new crop's coming in right now. Yes, it sure is. And I guess your folks are real fond of apples, too, ladies. So I just want to tell you that in this cookbook of mine that we're suggesting you send for, you'll find all kinds of good apple receipts. Yes, there are two crust pies and one crust pies and deep dish pies and apple fritters and baked apple dumpling and a Dutch apple cake, just to mention a few. Mm -hmm. And ladies, when you serve a tender, flaky apple pie, you want to get the full, fine flavor of your apple filling, don't you? And you don't want to be conscious with every bite you take that your crust's a little off flavor. Then make purer crust with spry. No all flavors in tender, flaky spry crust. And the reason for that, folks, is because spry stays fresh longer. That's one of the three extra advantages it brings you. Spry creams so easily, too. And that makes quick, easy work of cake mixing. And spry is purer. And that means no unpleasant acrid odor when you fry. Now, remember, spry is the only shortening that brings you all three of these advantages. So isn't it very much to your advantage to get spry? There's only one answer they can make to that, Dan. Yes, and they're making that answer, Fred. Millions of women have changed to spry, and thousands more are doing so every day. So join the parade. Get spry from your grocer this afternoon and send it once for the cookbook and frosting tin. Because remember, tomorrow is the very last time this offer will be made. So better sit down and send for yours right now. You know, for your convenience, your grocer has a special order blank. Ask him for it. But most important of all, remember it takes just one spry disc and ten cents in coin to get a big 52-page cookbook and a set of six different colored frosting tints. And be sure to get the address right. It's Aunt Jenny, Box 19, New York City. And ladies, don't you forget to hear how this story of Bill and Molly and Chris turned out. It seemed like an unsolvable tangle at the time. Wouldn't you say so? Molly kept saying over and over and over... How can I hurt Chris after he's been so good, so understanding? And yet I love Bill more than life itself. You see, no matter what happened, someone was bound to be hurt. 
What did they finally do? You'll find out tomorrow. True names are never used in Spry's real-life stories. Dan Seymour speaking. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.